Okay, so it's got polypropylene antifreeze in it, so it, it has been set up for storage. Um, we've got, it's got two pumps here and here, and this is the five micron filter, and this is the 20 micron filter. Mm -hmm. Here's our feed water pressure. So that's the way to, to you know, ensure, oops, it's gonna be a little shaky. And then here's how many gallons an hour it's gonna make. And this is zero to 25, so usually it's in the middle. I'm guessing it puts mm -hmm. out 12 or so, we'll find out. And then it's got a, a run and a flush valve, and that's for I'm assuming your fresh water because it has the charcoal filter in it. And so we bring feed water in and just in case you just put water in at the dock, it doesn't look like you have the automatic uh, flush feature. So you just, you know, take care of that on your own. But I'm sure if we turn this, the potable water pressure, we'd hear it run in and through the system. And then this valve is for run off service. I assume the service is where you can put a, a pickling cartridge in it and and uh, and let it recirculate is normally mm -hmm. what happens. Um, and then we still have to find the Clark pump. Okay, so we just pulled the sails up and out of here, and there is the Clark pump that does the work. And um, this is that pressure relief valve. And um, there's two different models. I remember them telling me and then it looks like you've got a standard 40 inch membrane back in there behind it so um we also have it looks like this is the sea strainer right here um and a line going down so we just have to find out where the intake is so as a new technician you're going to follow this line down until you find the seacock and everything else looks like it's contained Nice and neat in this little space. Okay, so we got this extra spigot here at the galley, and most water makers that I've seen, um, this is a manual water maker as opposed to the fully automatic systems. And so generally what happens is we can select to pull our RO water out here. Uh -huh. So you could actually pull drinking water out without putting it in a tank if you think your tank uh -huh. has a funny taste. Um, and or for testing, testing. the TDS, right? Uh -huh. So we could figure out if we're in that ballpark of, of contamination. So normally we're looking for um, a valve to select between this and the uh, water tanks. And we also might have to call the other mic and see which, if it goes into uh -huh. which water tank. Um, but we'll know by looking underneath here and following and seeing if we have one of those little black quarter inch hard lines, which is our product water in the lazarette and just seeing if it's coming out here yeah let's take a look take a look there's right gonna in. be some garbage to pull out yeah, here all right and recycling and garbage yeah, there are vent lines to the tanks in here that i pull out and that mike has encouraged me to plumb someday into the sink so i don't have to pull them out every time i start mm. things up can you uh get my phone okay so this is how we do it class you don't know any you know you start following following things out so there's the black line and look at this it goes right there and sure enough it's marked with sample and product and so and the other one would be tank so there's our selector valve right there and so we are going to it's in the sample mode right now and so we should be in good shape. So we now have identified all the bits and pieces, we think, the membrane and the Clark pump, all your pre-filters and everything. Um, what we're gonna need to do is to, we'll check the book, we're gonna run, we gotta run it in, for quite a long time to make sure we get all of the pickling solution and all of the antifreeze out, mm -hmm. and then all that polypropylene antifreeze out, the pink stuff, and then you don't want to push any of that through your membrane so we're going to let it run for 45 minutes or i'll read the manual it's not un-american to read the manual <laughs> and then um with and we do that without pressure and then once we crank up pressure we found the the valves and the selectors now so it goes um 
the product water comes out through that three-way valve and then it'll come out in the sink here and then we can actually test the water that's coming out of it okay so yeah. step one is going to be to read the directions i already see the pressure relief is off we'll go back there over it and we can turn it on and run it we're going to need some clean filters there's lots of those we have filters too yeah. so before yeah. we start making water we're going to uh put some clean filters on it yeah so, all right yeah so we're just talking about this so the boat has port and starboard tanks and the product underneath the sink here when we send it out we don't know which tank it goes to but generally when you set a boat up like this um we would be uh just leaving the starboard tank full kind of our backup water and then the port tank over here we would just use it and every day or two we would uh run it and add water Ooh, i like that inspection port what a nice way to go ah, very nice to removable there's your water tank gauge but i don't see without taking this off if it has that black quarter inch line i would call mike the previous owner yeah and see if uh if he knows so just to verify that it is going into what, that that what, port tank though? probably your okay. vent and fill there are three. Oh, and there's three so if we have probably vent and fill um this potentially could be the ro water i can look it's right on the other side of the galley yeah. here so let's if i pop in over here i could probably see if that is the case okay so we're down in here and i can see the those are the hoses by the water tank and none of them match what we're looking for but if i look over here the product water is in this blue it's like an electrical carlon conduit it's just a protection i think and i see it just heads up and so we got to go up above the galley here and seth just opened this up look at this there is the blue right there which is just the protection they cut the fill and so all the product water does we verified go into this port tank so they just tee it into the fill and then it naturally goes down into that tank okay so we found the uh, tds monitor here and we just pulled water out of the tank and we're going to test it so let's stick it in there okay just and pressed on and uh yeah okay so we're looking at it and it says 45 44 i think i think it says oh yep parts per million which is perfect right so remember the world standard is a thousand us says more like 500 ro machine i don't know i'm guessing 100 to 200 um or less uh just depends on the the quality of the membrane and stuff so we have our meter and everything but i was just reading the directions uh you know and it was only 20 minutes without pressure to get rid of the storage chemicals unless it's been stored with the pink stuff yes it has been four to six hours page 34 we might need to get some coffee okay <laughs> so we've determined that since i'm taking my boat for the weekend in this beautiful weather yeah. that uh we're gonna leave seth with his homework they do say good four to six hours and we want to follow the manufacturer's recommendations so i'm going to give you your your homework assignment seth and you okay. could run this um i don't need to be here and then once we get it flushed and ready to go with some new filters uh -huh. we'll pop down before or after our systems class and we'll actually bake water okay so the things that you're going to need to do there's just a couple of them it's pretty easy um you're going to open clean the sea strainer and keep an eye on it we've got the valve here open um for your seawater we have the pressure relief valve right here it's backed out it's only needs to be out a half a turn it says it was out about six turns so we'll open that a turn and a half you just want to make sure that isn't leaking and so what we're going to do is without pressure it's just going to circulate seawater through it we're going to turn on both both pumps you got pump one and pump two and then um you're going to run it for six hours and all you're doing is watching the water that goes overboard and looking in here periodically to make sure you don't have any leaks you're just flushing salt water through it um and then 
This valve will be in the run position here, which is where it normally is going to, mm -hmm. to stay. When you're done and you want to put fresh water through the membrane, the first thing you have to do is put a new charcoal filter in here and you'll have to turn off your pressure water pump and bleed the pressure off in your galley sink because otherwise you take this off, the water pump will just pump water all over the place. So, and then once that's done, you just turn this valve like that and hear the water go through yeah. and see it go through. That's our flush. So remember, it's not really a back flush when we did the water maker lesson. It's just taking fresh water from your tank and the charcoal filter will make sure there's no um, chlorine in it. And it just pushes itself through this entire system. But the, really the most important piece is just the membrane. And so after every run, they're going to tell you two or three minutes of opening that valve to run a good amount of fresh water and just push all that salt water out. So after you run this thing for your six hours and it's nice and clean and you've changed that filter, then just flush that for two or three minutes and uh, some fresh water through there. And then we'll come back and, and part two is just to close the pressure relief valve. We got the test spigot and we will actually make water and test it. So any questions? <laughs> clear as mud. Clear as uh, mud. Yeah. Clear as, uh, as seawater. <laughs> okay. So we're down in here getting ready to do our flush and pump two comes on, works well, and we should be able to let that run for the four to six hours. The trouble is pump one I turned on, the fan comes on, we have power, we have the circuit breakers on, and we were not getting any um, pump running. So these pumps do have a pressure switch on the bottom, and so that was the first thing that we went to test, and uh, sure enough, down in here, so troubleshooting i could do a continuity check across the switch but it'd be really hard to get in here so we're just going to put a paper clip in here and bypass the pressure switch because these pumps in an open system like that are never going to reach pressure and shut off um, if it was a potable water pump of course we'd want it to run at low pressure and if it got to whatever psi shut off and so this will just verify that we need to replace that switch um, but we would like to know if something's happening here so and sure enough, we could get this and we could make water go. So it's a simple matter of replacing this uh, pressure switch if it's needed. I'm going to call the uh, local Spectra guy and see. I think we can bypass that pressure switch and just let her run all the time is the way the system's designed. So, Okay, so that's brine water overboard just so you kind of get an idea what that looks like. Video not for Okay, so describe for me Seth what we've done so far after we did our investigations okay. you had your homework and what did you do down here uh, let's see I replaced the charcoal filter yep and um, before I did that I closed the main the seacock that feeds all of this and then once that and I also cleaned out the sea strainer mm -hmm. um, and so when that stuff was all done I opened the seacock back up I powered up pump one. Oh, actually, I put a jumper in there mm -hmm. to bypass to fix the that problem. Yep. Yeah. And um, and then basically powered up pump one, verified that brine was coming out of the brine output, and then I turned that off. Powered up pump two because I saw that in the manual. Yep. Checked that that was working, and then I had both powered up, and I ran them for two hours on Thursday I think and then we have the long weekend and I run them for four more hours today so okay. this is flushing out the yep. heat to freeze in the system. Okay and you have it still set to the test spigot right? I believe so. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just close that pressure okay. relief valve and when you do that we will start making product water and we'll okay. look at the gauge in here the flow rate and your pressures and we will see what happens. Okay. And then we'll get your TDS monitor and see what kind of water it's making. So go ahead and close the pressure relief. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see what happens. So that would be fully right turning on this. Yep. Okay. Which is all the way in. Oh, wait, I'm gonna back off for a second. 
I think we're still supposed to change the point five, the five micron and the twenty micron. We could. It depends on the pressure. You can go ahead and close okay. it. I mean, it just depends on if they got a lot of debris in them. We may not have good feed. You know, good pressure. We'll find out. Okay, that's fully closed. I see the pressure going up. And then you're going to hear this thing cycling. See, there goes the pressure. Here goes plump. That's that valve going back and forth. And it's got a dampener right there. That helps with that pulsing. Got a whole black capsule. Yep. Dampener. And then look at there. We have, we are making 16, 15, 16 gallons of water an hour. So let's go inside and look. Yeah, it's running. Holy cow. Holy cow, we're making water. That's yeah. what 15 gallons an hour looks like. So do you have your TDS monitor? Yeah, it's up there, but I'll grab a cup. Grab here. a cup and we'll measure it. That's pretty exciting. And then this is your normal routine. So um, what you do is you test the water. Then you flip that valve that we found in here. Uh -huh. It goes into the tank. It goes into that tank. You run it for X number of hours. And uh, you know, you can run it for two hours, an hour, whatever, how much water you need. How cool is that? Ocean water to drinking water. Yeah, well, the membrane could be old and need to be replaced, but that's a pretty inexpensive part. 477. Okay, 500, that's still within standard, but that indicates that we would want to probably do a cleaning cycle on it. Uh huh. Now, I would let it run for 20 minutes and then test it again. Because that. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's been, that line's been sitting yeah. empty for how long? A long time. You know. Um, be at least a year if not, I don't know. Well, it's been pickled, but how long is it, you yeah. know? So, yes. <clears throat> and if it needs a membrane, we ain't scared. We can put a membrane in it. They're 200 bucks now, you know? Oh, yeah. Nine See, point. just a couple minutes. 117. How does it smell? How does it taste? Yeah. It's I want to get you on film here. All right. I'm gonna, I'll step up here and let me get a cup going for you. watch these videos in a few years when we are all wearing masks. I know, right? So we're getting out in our distance here. Give it a good smell. Doesn't smell. Yeah. <laughs> Tastes like water. That's good. Pretty cool. This came from there just five minutes ago. <laughs> And it would be so much better if we were in the Bahamas or something. Record this. So we just made water, drank it, you saw that. Um, now we shut off the two pumps and we're just going to forward flush a little fresh water through the charcoal filter. So go ahead and flip that gray valve. Should be the 